Imagine your elderly father is on life support. The doctors don't know if he'll ever wake up. The question arises, do you pull the plug? He's 70, your brother says. He lived a long, full life, but now he's nothing but an empty husk. Besides, he's a financial burden now, and he wouldn't want the family to go broke just so that he can stay unconscious for a few years before inevitably dying. The right thing to do would be for you to cut open his abdomen, pull his entrails out, and eat them. At some point during this process, he would pass on to the other side, peacefully, just like he always wanted. That's crazy, your sister says. Obviously, all life is precious, and he's our dad. We can't eviscerate and cannibalize him. The right thing to do is to weekend at Bernie's this bitch. She tells you to put sunglasses on him and take him to wherever he'd normally go, and manipulate his body into the positions he'd normally be in. Your life would become your father's life. When he'd normally eat, you'd shovel food into his gaping mouth, and when your mother wanted to get dick down, you'd tape a ruler to your father's flaccid dick and push him in and out of your own mother. Obviously, your reaction to your siblings is, What the fuck? Whether or not to keep an elderly family member on life support is an interesting ethical dilemma. But by only giving you two possible solutions, both of which are fucking insane, I've made you not want to choose at all. This is why I fucking hate factions. The Outer Worlds was a particularly ridiculous example of this. Should we live in a dystopia where your entire life is in service to a corporation? Or a socialist hippie commune? Obviously neither, but the question the game poses is an interesting one. At what point does a completely free market actually enslave people? But it only gives you two retarded choices, slavery or socialism. I'm not trying to get political, I don't think it's extreme of me to say that there's a hell of a lot of gray area between living in the woods with a bunch of fucking weirdos and entire planets being owned by single corporations. I'm not much of an RPG guy, and I think this is it. This is the problem. The few times that I've put in the effort to really learn the different factions in an RPG, I always learn that they're all just different shades of fucking crazy, and I end up feeling like I wasted my time. Every RPG I've played just asks me to pick the lesser of two evils. So, here's a question. Why? Why would I want to do that? If I have to choose between the lesser of two evils, I'm just not going to play your fucking game. Do I want to support the Legion, who literally crucify people, or the NCR, a weak, corrupt bureaucracy? Obviously, a shitty, weak government that only claims to support its people is preferable to goddamn lunatics and football pads, but I don't want to pick the lesser of two evils. That's not fun. If I wanted to do that, I'd go out and vote. And I'm sure as shit not gonna do that. So, what the fuck does any of this have to do with Stalker, which, you know, isn't an RPG? Well, basically, whenever I post a video, I post it to a relevant subreddit. And with my last video, I posted it to the Stalker subreddit. Obviously, the people there are, you know, Stalker fans. So when I said I didn't pay attention to the story because I ain't reading no goddamn words because I ain't gay, they insisted that the story was great and that I should. I sort of brushed this off. Of course they liked it, they're Stalker fans. I had noticed that there were factions in Shadow of Chernobyl, so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they're probably all crazy. I didn't want to put in the effort because I've been burned too many times before. I mean, come on. Duty? Let me guess, they're fascists. Just a bunch of fucking Nazis, I bet. I mean, look at this outfit. These guys are definitely wannabe Nazis. But in clear skies, I decided to make the effort to actually decipher these weird little fucking symbols, the Alpha Beta, and learned that they just think the zone is dangerous. The radioactive area around Chernobyl, which creates deadly monsters and dangerous anomalies, is expanding and becoming more aggressive. They believe the zone's expansion needs to be fought for the safety of mankind, and that the best way to do that is to kick the shit out of every monster inside of it. Sure, they're real strict and militaristic and a little douchey, but, you know, they're fighting shit like this. They sort of have to be. Well, these guys make too much sense. They don't seem crazy or stupid, so I'm guessing every other faction is either evil or nuttier than Mr. Peanut's discarded tissues, huh? I talked to some guys at Freedom, who I assumed wanted to colonize the zone with women and children so that the monsters would be appeased by their tasty flesh, but... No. They think the zone, while dangerous, can't just be destroyed. It's, it's not that simple. Every time people push farther into it, the zone creates dangerous storms and even more monsters. It can't just be beaten into submission because it'll always hit back harder. We need to understand it in order to control it. It must be studied and researched. They seem to be the embodiment of the Nietzsche quote. When you gaze long into the abyss, you may find the abyss to be fucking neat. What is up with that abyss? Why is it so dark in there? We could probably learn a lot from that abyss. 
Honestly, for the first time ever while talking to a faction in a game, I was like, oh fuck, this guy's right. The zone is fascinating, what is going on here? Is Stephen King somehow involved? Probably. If the zone could have been beaten by shooting at it, then it would have disappeared a long time ago. Those duty fucks are just like cavemen throwing rocks at UFO. They don't get it. Freedom is where it's at. Also, they smoke a lot of weed. I don't know, I find that funny. I like the Harold and Kumar movies. I'm not made of fucking stone. Honestly, after talking to these guys, I decided to go to the wiki and look at the other factions, and honestly, they all sort of make sense in some way. Like these guys, Monolith. They're crazy religious fucks that think there's some weird alien shit going on in the middle of the zone, and honestly, maybe. I mean, this shit's fucked. Maybe goddamn Dumbledore's jerking off Gandalf in the middle of this clusterfuck. Who knows? Every faction in this game makes sense in some way, even if you don't personally agree. Like, somehow, even the military in this game makes sense. Like, yeah, they're corrupt and incompetent, but their reason for being there is solid. Keep people out of the zone, and keep the monsters in. Yeah, they're fucking awful at it, and if you give them ten bucks, they'll let you go wherever the fuck you want. Well, they did that in Shadow of Chernobyl. In Clear Skies, it was like the beaches of goddamn Normandy when I tried to get into the zone. Despite the fact that most of these characters aren't voiced and their lips flap like fucking Muppets, Kermit the Frog here. They're a million times more relatable than a vast majority of video game characters. Because when these people were confronted with something horrifying and powerful, something that flew in the face of everything that we thought we knew, their reactions to it were all understandable and human. Some tried to contain it, some wanted to profit off of it, some seek to destroy it, and some desire simply to understand it. When I hit you with that ethical dilemma in the beginning of the video, did you relate to the brother and sister that were offering fucking insane solutions to the problem? Of course not, they were just crazy and or stupid as hell. Characters that are insane are not relatable or compelling. I don't like choosing between different groups of crazy bastards. Or crazy bastards and people that are fucking incompetent. That's not fun. That's not interesting. Choosing between them doesn't make me think about what I value or who I am as a person. This even extends beyond factions. The big buzzwords that games always push in marketing is that your decisions have consequences, or that you make morally gray decisions. Only having the option to pick something terrible because the writers didn't want to give you choices that make sense is not morally gray, it's just fucking stupid. Really, piss-poor factions are just a symptom of the larger problem. Game developers seem to be unwilling to ask questions that actually matter. Let's take Bioshock, for example. Now, I love Bioshock, but I strongly dislike how it pretends to be asking complex moral questions when it isn't. What's the big moral choice in Bioshock? Should you kill little girls or not? That is the goddamn question. The game acts like this is a tough choice. You see? The little girls look sorta of spooky. They've been twisted by the mad scientists of Rapture. Maybe you'd be putting them out of their misery. I'll go there soon with Mr. Bubbles! Yeah, they seem real fucking miserable. They got yellow eyes. Big fucking deal. They seem better behaved and happier than 90% of the children I see in public. Now, of course, you get some Atom, which you can use to level up if you kill them, but it's not that much of a difference, and if you save a few of them, the game will give you a big reward of Atom, therefore rendering it all meaningless. I know this is not an original observation, but it's still something that bugs the shit out of me. Don't bother giving me a choice if the choice is obvious. I choose not to kill little girls every goddamn day, but it doesn't feel like I'm choosing. I'm just not a goddamn monster. And the same applies to Bioshock. I actually looked up why they did this, and it turns out that the lead designer, Ken Levine, didn't want to. He wanted to make the right choice difficult to make. But his bosses made him cut that shit out. If the game became incredibly difficult to complete if you didn't harvest the little sisters, then that would have been interesting. The moral question the game asks would change from, should you kill little girls, to, is it okay to kill some of these girls if it would allow you to become strong enough to destroy the system that created them in the first place? It's an uncomfortable question to ask, but it's an interesting one. It makes you think, my god, what a concept. A story that asks a question that makes you think. Stories are great tools for exploring difficult questions. Can war ever be justified if the innocent always suffer the worst from it? At what point is a machine a man? Can doing the right thing lead to horrible consequences, not just for yourself, but for everyone? What happens if you just sort of forget about the Iron Fleet? I- god damn it, I fucking hate Game of Thrones so much. That was like a pop cultural touchstone. Like, 
everyone watched and loved that show because it was both smart and fun, and they just fucking threw it in the trash for reasons that I cannot comprehend. Why is it that movies, TV, and books all ask more interesting questions when games should be the best at doing this? In a game, you can actually answer the question and see it play out. The problem is that they never seem to ask questions that matter, or when they do ask questions that matter, they just give you terrible choices. They always either have an obvious right answer, or they just don't give you the option to pick something sensible. Do you kill a little girl or not? Do you go back for the money when you know that you were moments away from death? Do you nuke a town full of innocent people or not? Do you support racist nationalists or a weak, inept government? These aren't questions that are worth asking. I'm not going to pretend that Stalker Clear Skies completely nails this. I haven't finished it yet because I'm stuck on this bullshit area. But I'm about 13 hours in and so far the game hasn't had me make any meaningful choices. And the factions, while genuinely compelling and interesting, have not had any major impact on the plot. But at least it's fucking trying. I can't think of any game other than this that actually had me ponder something. It had me mulling over a question, and really thinking about it from several different angles. What will we do if we're confronted with something terrible and powerful? Something dangerous that we don't understand, but may just have to live with? That's a question worth asking.